Good afternoon, Veritas scientists. Today is Monday, April 27th, 2020, but I know that a lot of you will be doing this at a later date, but this is the lesson that I'm doing on April 27th, and i um, not sure exactly what date it is that you have, but check out your Google Classroom and you can find out there. All right, so this was from last Friday, <clears throat> April 17th, before April vacation. I left you with this question. It says, using your knowledge of ecosystems and the carbon cycle, identify one negative and one positive impact that a quick change to an ecosystem would have on the plants and animals that live there. Explain your two impacts with one piece of evidence each. So we were learning about how ecosystems usually have very slow changes. Changes happen very slowly over long periods of time to ecosystems. Due to processes that we've learned about, such as weathering, erosion, and animal adaptations is where we're going to start today. These are very, very slow changes that take hundreds or thousands or even millions of years, right? Sometimes ecosystems change very quickly, such as due to natural disasters, human impact, forest fires, mudslides, avalanches, etc. So usually these changes to ecosystems are extremely slow but sometimes they're very, very fast. So I wanted to look at one that was very fast, a quick change, um, and I chose to talk about a forest fire. Okay, so let's start with the negative <clears throat> impact that it would have. The negative impact would be the plants and animals that lived there will die, or will have to find food and shelter somewhere else. Okay, so if there's a forest fire in an area, the negative impact it will have is that the plants that live there are going to die. The animals that live there will die if they stay. And if they're lucky enough to escape, they're going to have to go find food and shelter somewhere else or they're going to die, right? If they don't have anywhere to stay safe, if they don't have enough food to eat, then they're going to either get hunted or they're going to die, right? So those are negative effects. And my evidence is their habitat was destroyed by the fire. So they have nowhere to, nowhere to hide and there's a good chance that they are going to die. All right, but a positive impact, I told you this would be a little bit harder to come up with as an example. So here's my positive impact that a forest fire would have. It says all of the carbon from the ash will support the growth of new plants and animals that were able to adapt and survive after the fire. And my evidence was what we learned about the carbon cycle, that carbon supports life. All life on earth needs carbon. If it, there wasn't carbon, if the carbon cycle didn't happen where carbon was used by all different parts of our earth, right, life wouldn't be able to happen on our earth. So carbon is needed for all life, right? So when there's a fire, all the ash is carbon. So that ash is actually going to help support new life. New plants are going to grow. New animals are going to be able to live there eventually. It's going to take some time. But those animals that were able to adapt or the plants that were able to adapt and grow after a fire are going to be able to survive. And it's actually going to give lots of opportunity for new fresh life. So that would be a positive thing, even though forest fires are not positive things. That's one positive thing that would come out of it, is that so much ash, so much carbon is going to allow a lot of new growth and a lot of new life. All right? Um, I know uh, down the Cape, I go down the Cape in the summertime, and the place I go mountain biking at down there, they purposely set forest fires in certain parts of the, fo of the forest because they have these vines that take over, um, and they're invasive, they're called. They're not supposed to live down the Cape, but somehow they've they've made their way down to the cape right um so those what they do is they they literally section off a spot and they light it on fire and they you know the the fire department is there to make sure it doesn't get out of hand but they purposely burn the forest that way it kills those bad invasive species and it allows all new life to grow from that okay um, so I thought that was an interesting example. All right, so good job. I want you to read yours, share it with me um, on Google Classroom. I want to see what you guys wrote. All right, but here's our lesson for today, Monday, April 27th, 2020. Um, it's an intro to adaptations. So let's start with some vocabulary. Now, you did learn this in fourth grade. I know that because I used to teach fourth grade. So this should be a little bit familiar with you. Before you watch this video, you should have watched the one that says Science Intro to Adaptations. It's a video of me down at the farm talking about skunk plants. Please check that video out because it'll help you to better understand what we're learning now. Okay, so an adaptation is a noun. That's what the N stands for there. It's a thing, right? It's a change that happens to a plant or animal or any living thing 
that allows that living thing to survive and multiply or reproduce in its environment. So an adaptation is a change that allows a plant or animal to be able to survive where it lives. Okay, another form of that word, adaptation, is the noun form. This is the verb form. There's going to be some action when you say adapt. So to adapt is the act of changing so a living thing is able to survive in its environment. So the adaptation is the change. When you adapt, that's the act of an animal changing. Okay, so you're going to hear this word and this word a lot, adapt and adaptation. Okay? Um, number two is structural. Structural is an adjective because it describes a noun. So a structural adaptation, so structural describes the body or physical part of something. So if structural describes the body of something, then a structural adaptation is a change that happens to the body of a plant or animal. And we're going to talk a lot more about this. Now here's another word, behavioral, which is also an adjective. It describes a noun. So behavioral describes the way a plant or animal acts or the way that it behaves, right? That's kind of part of this word is behave. All right, so a behavioral adaptation would be a change in the way that the animal acts or behaves. So we're going to learn about structural adaptations and behavioral adaptations, which are the two types of adaptations that plants and animals go through so that they can survive in the place that they live. Okay? So here's some examples. The red are structural adaptations. So structural adaptation is a change in a living thing's body parts that allow it to survive in its environment. Okay, so if the body parts of something change, then it's a structural adaptation. Okay, so here's some examples. Wolves have sharp teeth and claws. Since the teeth and the claws are part of their body, those are changes that happen to their body so that they can survive where they live. Those are structural adaptations. Okay, the second one, cheetahs have large nostrils in their nose, so they can take in large amounts of oxygen in each breath, right? They're extremely fast, and part of the reason why they're able to be so fast is because their nose has big nostrils and allows them to take in lots and lots of oxygen for every breath that they take, which allows them to be able to run faster. Okay, so that's a change in their body part. The nose is part of their body. So since the change was their nose, it was their body part, it's called a structural adaptation. And here's an example that goes back to the video. It says, skunk plants have strong roots that hold them tightly into the ground near a river. So since the roots are part of the body of the plant, right, then that is a structural adaptation. Those roots are so thick and so strong and hold them into the ground really, really tightly that that is a structural change or a structural adaptation that has allowed them to be able to live next to the river like I talked about in that video. Because if they didn't have that change, if they didn't have those really strong roots, then they would have just been washed away by the water and they never would be able to live there. So in order for them to be able to survive next to the river, they need to have had that change. They need to have had that body part change. And those are structural adaptations. We'll talk more about those in the next lesson. Okay, here's number two, behavioral adaptations now. So these are changes in the way that an animal behaves or acts. So it says a change in the way a living thing acts that allows it to survive in its environment. So here's three examples. Lions play fight with their siblings, their brothers and sisters, to learn how to hunt. So they're not born knowing how to hunt. They have to learn this. And they learn it from their brothers and sisters by play fighting. They learn how to hunt. Okay, here's another example about Canada geese. They fly in a V shape and change leaders to help them migrate long distances. So here's an example from a book that I have. So if you see, they fly in the shape of a V. And the leader is the one that's right in the front. So what's happening is the leader is cutting off a lot of the wind that's coming in their face. So it makes it easier for the rest of these birds to fly because there's less wind that's hitting them, right? But if you're the leader, you're going to get really, really tired really, really quickly, right? So they will change leaders. This bird will come up and be the leader for a little bit. And then it will change and the next bird will come up and be the leader for a bit. That way it helps them be able to not get too tired so that they can migrate and they can fly very, very far distances. And that's a change in their behavior that they have learned that they needed to be able to do or they wouldn't be able to migrate so far. They'd be too tired and then they would die. 
Okay, and here's the last example. It says sea turtles dive straight downward to avoid predators as soon as the eggs hatch and they wait until dark. So sea turtles are born in the beach. Okay, so the adult sea turtle has to go up onto the sand, they dig a hole and they lay the eggs down in the hole, right? So the sea turtles, their behavioral adaptation is, first of all, they know to dig straight up towards the heat coming from the sun. They just dig themselves right up out of the sand. Then they head straight for the water, all right? Kind of like this. So this turtle right here just came up. He dug himself up. He knew, he or she knew, oh, there's heat up there. Let me dig straight up. That's a behavior that has allowed this turtle to be able to survive. Then they know to go straight to the ocean. And when they get to the ocean, they dive as deep down as they possibly can. That way, if there are any birds up above, if there are any predators around, they're going to be less likely to be able to catch this turtle because the turtle is going to go to the water and it's going to dive straight to the bottom. And it's going to wait until nighttime to do that. So these are all parts of its behavior that have allowed it to survive. If that turtle during the day, like in this picture, tried to go to the ocean, most likely a bird is going to pick it up and eat it. Or some other predator is going to find it and it's going to eat it, right? So they wait until it gets dark out and they are born knowing how to do that which is a behavioral adaptation. Nobody had to teach them this. They were born, they, they know how to do that. They know how to behave that way so that they can survive. All right, and we're gonna get a lot more detailed into all of this. So this is just our first lesson. So if this is all new to you, that's okay. Okay, here's a question I want you to answer and we'll talk about this tomorrow. It says, identify one structural adaptation and one behavioral adaptation of a wolf. Since we're the wolf pack at Veritas, I figured we'd choose a wolf. Include the definition of each type of adaptation as well. So tell us what is a structural adaptation and give us one example. Tell us what is a behavioral adaptation and give us one example of a wolf. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.